Women have traditionally held high status in the Lakota culture, in part because of the role of a female culture hero who, as the story is told, gave the Lakota people seven sacred rites, including the peace pipe. She is known as Pate Sawi, the white buffalo calf woman. It is her importance to the tribe that planted the seed for a modern day honoring of women, the White Buffalo Calf Women Society. Executive Director Lindsay Compton is joining us today via Zoom to tell us more about the organization as well as how they are being guided by Pate Sawi's example to empower their community to end violence on the Rosebud Reservation. Welcome, Lindsay. Good morning. How are you doing today? Good, good. I'd mm -hmm. love to start with talking. You do so many different things. So can we start with the youth services? Youth services have have changed, of course, in the past year. We provide different aspects of advocacy, referrals, wraparound care. Um, we provide now Zoom, what is Zoom, Zoom meetings for our juvenile detention center that's on the reservation. And we also have historically and are continuing to develop and strengthen our role in advocacy inside the schools themselves and with other collaboration with other entities in and around the region. So talk to me a little bit about why it's so important to address these issues specific to Native American women and on the reservation. Well, why Buffalo Cove Women's Society is historical. It's a pillar of the community started by Lakota matriarchs. You know, we're going into our 44th year of service. And so it's very unique. It's very unique to have a nonprofit founded with um, a spiritual sort of beginning and to carry it forward through decades now. Um, being a tribally chartered entity and a state chartered entity we have a unique creative flexibility, I feel, at White Buffalo Calf Women Society to address the reality of the needs of the most marginalized women of the nation, which is uh, Native American, Indigenous women displaced by generations of generations of poverty, um, after effects of colonization and, and genocide, and and the reality to bring in ideas of wellness, being bring in ideas of crisis response. Uh, an action to help individuals create and define their own success when it comes to their own idea of what healing means to them and to certainly be there for them 24 seven culturally responsive program within um, within certainly the region as their service area it goes beyond just our reservation. And can you explain a little bit more how the youth services have a more culturally appropriate response when the work you're doing than you would find outside of your organization? The, the services that we're able to offer through our advocates, through their different roles, are specific to being able to tailor different um, curriculums, being able to edit and come up with what we see fits the particular need because even one community, it might look different from the next community within the same reservation. We look to be able to develop our staff so that way they have trauma-informed training so that way we can provide the best service, most direct service. It was really difficult this past year during the pandemic to take that basically at lightning speed pretty much overnight, pretty much within weeks and months worth of time through what was direct service on site to what that then looks like um, remotely, which was, which was difficult. Um, uh, in our area, the main schools that we, we had service went 100% remote. And so between the core academics and that structure, it's like, where, where do we fit in? And how could we continue to provide service if it wasn't during the school day um, with different classrooms and different support and different advocacy and crisis response? And what does that look like um, coming directly from the organization, coming directly from the society to different online platforms? And we're going to talk um, a little bit more about individual mm -hmm. and group support, but you specific you have a teen specific support group, right? Our teen our teen specific support group um, goes at this point directly to our place and our role and our advocacy within the juvenile detention center. One believe we Choni TP, which is here on the Rosebud Reservation, and so weekly we we tap into 
our relatives. We don't have clients. We have relatives that we provide support, advocacy, referrals upon whenever they exit out of the situation and how it looks like in the community and getting them to different um, from their very basic needs to then going above and beyond that too. What does that look like for culturally responsive programming? It was, it was difficult because a lot of our culturally responsive programming is in closed spaces, is in um, direct contact as far as if we were to do any traditional sort of healing aspects. And so we had to revise that to consider everybody's safety. And then what does that look like sustainability and this not only this year, but coming out of the pandemic and what that looks like with our advocates and their direct service. Um, a lot of this can be creating different, um, like for example, I have one right here on my dashboard, medicine bags, wherever we go over different aspects of medicine, what it means to us culturally, what it's to be used for, and then send the relative home with something that they can keep and hold on to that sort of addresses the different five senses, whether um, they're burning sage or where, or sweet grass or just having that close to them. And I've had relatives, clients, students who have years later talked about how they still have um, what they've created with us. And they still, like it's still one of their precious artifacts or items that they keep with them um, from the talk, experience that they had for us. Can we talk a little bit about how ways that viewers who are watching today or people outside of um, Buffalo Calf Women can help or what we can do to volunteer or help anything you're doing? You, we, our website, www.wbcws.org, um, goes into our philosophy it goes into our mission statement we are a 501c3 nonprofit. it's um, those donation dollars are so important for us because they're unrestricted and those are our creative dollars so those are something that we can funnel directly through staff to our clients that we receive and go above and beyond and outside sort of um, the different budgeted what we have with our very specific with our other funding sources so that's very important for volunteers um, at this time we have people across the nation and sometimes even internationally contact us we have wonderful um, donors who have sent us refurbished laptops refurbished tablets those are very important for us because we see that as a need, not a want these days to be able to get those electronic devices immediately out to families so they're able to um, as something as simple as donating your cell phone and 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 I know telling mm -hmm. people about what you're doing is one of the best ways to help too. So thank you for helping us do that by talking to us today. Absolutely. Thank you very much. White Buffalo Calf Women's Society is a 2021 Avera tradition of caring grant recipient located in Mission, South Dakota. You could reach them by phone or if you'd like to help, you can call them at 605-856-2317. You can also find the organization's wish list and make a financial donation online at wbcws.org.